here, Dr. Rick Wallace, dropping in on you. Uh, it's been a long day. I've been up and going since 4 this morning. Right now it's 2.22 and I still have a ways to go. Uh, I am here to talk to you about the latest news with the not guilty verdict of Kyle Rittenhouse. I want to add some context to it. I want to share my sentiments and my assessments of what went down. Uh, and why I haven't been vocal on the issue to this point. Uh, before I do, I want to remind everybody that we're in the midst of a fundraiser and we definitely need the support of the subscribers on this channel and the viewers of my many uh, videos and the work that I do. Uh, it's important that we have your support. So go to the description box, uh, click the link, uh, go to the site, or go directly to uh, the processor and make a contribution, or you can contribute directly through the organization's Cash App account, which is also listed in the description box. Okay. Uh, what I have found and read and confirmed is that 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who was 17 at the time uh, he shot uh, three people, two of which passed away this past summer at a rally, uh, riot, or whatever you want to call it, depending on how you <clears throat> perceive it. Uh, I've been talking a lot. I had several clients today and a bunch of other stuff, so my voice is pretty much shot for the day. Uh, but anyway, uh, whatever you want to call it, whether it was a riot, whether it was uh, a protest, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, he took an automatic weapon. Well, I take that back. It wasn't an automatic weapon. It was an assault rifle. Rifle. It wasn't automatic. Uh, I want to make that clear. Uh, I believe it was an AR-15. He took it across state lines from where he lived into Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, the, the weird thing about this situation is that uh, the riot was to protest. Uh, the police shooting of a person, uh, Mr. Blake, that set off, you know, and it was already heated, you know, we were coming off of a, a number of different situations of police violence, police brutality, and uh, this just sparked. And so, uh, according to uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, he was going over to help protect uh, property uh, now granted he's 17 years old so he did not legally possess the weapon uh, that charge was dismissed it was never even give, taken before a jury the possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under the age of 18 that one was dismissed the one that would most likely have been the easiest to convict on was dismissed uh, what happened is um, he went there. He was confronted by some rioters. Um, from what I can gather, um, you know, I don't watch these violent videos anymore, so I have to watch steel shots and kind of piece things together. But um, he was confronted. Uh, whether he instigated the confrontation or not, uh, he did get hit over the head with a skateboard. I think one person grabbed the gun, uh, barrel of the gun or whatever, but at the end of the day, he killed two people and seriously wounded uh, a third, uh, left, walked by police officers, waved at him, went home across state lines. And eventually when they identified him, he had to come back in and he was eventually arrested and charged. Okay, first and foremost, why haven't I been vocal about it? Why haven't I made a big issue about it? Well, honestly, I'm, I'm a person who believes right is right. Uh, regardless of your race, but I also am a person who is unapologetically black and we got enough going on on our home front that I don't have time to go to war and battle for non-blacks at this time. Now, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you what I believe to be right and true. Uh, if I am placed in a situation to do what's right, I'm going to always do what's right um, in the sense of my sense. In other words, 
to me, sometimes the law isn't always right because if it comes down to protecting my family, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If it come do comes down to avenging my family, I'm going to do whatever is necessary to be done uh, without consideration of what I should be in doing or what any statute or policy may state. There has to be an established uh, code within the black community that certain things will not be tolerated under any circumstance and the violation of anyone in my family under, or anyone under my care is absolutely intolerable and will be met with absolute unapologetic force so but when it comes down to sitting up and going to war and giving a voice to something uh and to a people who already have voices who already have power the, the, there were plenty of people speaking out for the people who were the victims of this so i didn't at this time the reason i'm dealing with it now is because of how many black people on social media in awe of the fact that kyle rittenhouse was acquitted of all charges and because he was acquitted he cannot be tried for those charges again no matter what new evidence may pop up no matter what happened he can walk out in the middle of the street right now and say i walked up and blew their brains out i came over there to do it and there's absolutely nothing they can do about it um what we have to understand here is we what we got is a real quick lesson in a couple of things number one white privilege number two uh the ability to fund a legal defense we saw that greatly uh 30 years ago with oj simpson uh Sometimes it's about race, other times it's about money and power. It's about having a legal defense that knows something. Somebody posted something that I believe to be absolutely true. And a part of what happened here, it, was, it wasn't uh, as clear cut and dry as this, but they said that a good attorney is great, uh, but a great attorney knows the judge. A good attorney knows the law, but a great attorney knows the judge. And it was obvious from what I could read about what's going on. I didn't watch the trial. I didn't keep up with it. But I definitely kept up, kept up with all of the updates that everybody else was making. And what I can tell you is the judge definitely played a role in his acquittal. But here's the flip side of things. When the judge plays the role in a person's uh, conviction, that can be appealed. You can come back and say, okay, the judge uh, acted inappropriately or the judge made a, an erroneous uh, call on a particular, uh, you know, a particular uh, petition to the court or whatever. And based on that, it, it may present an, a, an overturning of a conviction or the, um, you know, assessing that there needs to be a new trial or whatever the situation may be. Uh, in the flip side of things, if the judge in some kind of way influences uh, the acquittal of a person, that's absolutely nothing that can be done. Now, the judge may be censored. The judge may be in the future uh, in some way uh, censured um, or, you know, disciplined, but it's not going to change the outcome of the trial. That's a done deal. It's over with. The jury said not guilty. It's done. And so none of the charges that he had on the table of the five can ever be brought back up against him. And so he walks out a free person. He killed uh, two people, injured uh, another seriously with a AR-15 that he brought over state lines. Uh, so my issue actually from the beginning was, okay, this is a 17-year-old kid. If it was a 17-year-old black person, he, he would have been tried as an adult. He would have been treated as an adult. He would have never been referred to as a kid. He would have never been referred to as a teen. He would have automatically been a young man, and he would have been treated as such. So we know that much. Here's the thing that I don't think enough people actually thought about. He was a 17-year-old kid, meaning he was a minor. Someone bought him the gun and gave it to him, first and foremost. Number two, his mother who is the adult, who is his caregiver, who is the person who's responsible for making sure that he's in the right place at the right time, doing the right things, until he's an adult, is the one that drove him there with a loaded weapon and put him in that hostile environment. Number one is no de-escalation skills. He came over, he's supposed to be a medic, proven he wasn't a medic, proved that he, you know, so all the things he was supposed to be there for, he didn't have a skill set for. But he was plunged into a situa situation that was obviously hostile. 
and expected to manage that as if he had had the adequate training. And his mother was the person who did it. And she was not brought to trial. Again, you start to see uh, white privilege play uh, out as it has always played out. But don't let it think that it's just simply because it was a white kid. That was a lot of things at play. I don't know who he was. I don't know where he got the money from because I was actually under the impression that he was a poor white kid. But obviously looking at what I've been able to read and study, that was the, that was an 18 at the defense table. That wasn't a quarter of the per, that quarter point attorney. That wasn't a $1,500 attorney. That was an 18. And so either they had money and I, you know, I missed it or somebody came up with the money, uh, whatever it was, but he had an A-team. And so this is something that I think that has to be understood. When you're talking about a situation like this, money is still power. Uh, I think it was not proven any great, at any greater point than with O.J. Simpson's trial in the early 1990s. Um, and the flip side of that is, even then, they finally found a way to get him. Didn't get him for what they wanted, but they finally got him. That lets you know how the system is set up. They, you know, of course his arrogance uh, didn't help and his need to operate in their space didn't help him. Uh, but, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not uh, advocating or championing any calls for OJ, uh, but I'm just sitting up saying uh, it, is what that, it is what it is with that. So when it comes to this whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing, I think you've got a couple of things. And I think another thing that has my people a little in the uproar about this verdict is there's another trial that does have implications and does impact us, at least from an emotional perspective. And that's the Ahmaud uh, Arbery situation where these Mac Michaels and the other guy, I can't think of his name, uh, that were responsible for the murder of Ahmaud Arbery are on trial and everybody's paying attention and everybody's concerned. And then you start to look over at what happened at Kyle Rittenhouse and then you become a little bit more concerned. Will it just be another situation where someone takes a black life and then walks away? And I think that the situation is a little different. I think that the district attorney in the case with the Mike Michaels and the third party who I cannot ever remember his name. Uh, but anyway, I think that they have done a good job of painting what happened, how they basically stalked him, ran him down uh, for two and a half miles until he was just completely exhausted and could not try to get away. He was never confrontational until he had no more places to go and run, and he was just trying to get out of that situation, and they had a shotgun. Three men had to arm themselves against an unarmed man, and they killed him. Now... There are some things I want to say that I can't say, uh, but know that I'm thinking them, I and mean, those who think like me know what I'm thinking. I think that we've got to stop being so concerned about whether they get off or not. Because I, I, I'll tell you what, if somebody harms one of mine, I'm hoping they get off or I, that I get to them before the uh, officials get to them and get them into custody. I think that we should be so direct and precise in how we deal with people who mishandle us that they are literally hoping that the cops get to them first. They are hoping that they get convicted. That's what we need to be in our community is precise and to the point in dealing with people who violate the people in our community. Now, it's important that we say this or that I say this because I think that one point that gets lost in this is when I talk about protecting our kids, when I talk about protecting our women, when I talk about protecting our elderly, when I talk about protecting the young men in our community, I'm talking about from everybody, including the wayward idiots in the community. I'm not just talking about white people. Yeah, you know, we, we can't allow people to come from the outside inside and cause harm, but we cannot be tolerant, tolerant of those on the inside causing harm either. And, you know, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to go into a long tirade about a whole bunch of stuff, but as far as Kyle Rittenhouse, what, what happened is what should have been expected to happen under all of the circumstances. Uh, you know, from what I hear, 
Uh, he definitely should have been convicted of some things, uh, if nothing else, uh, at the very least involuntary manslaughter um, because that was a confrontation and he was outnumbered, but he shouldn't have been there and he should have de-escalated, he should have left. Um, and I don't think at any point his life was in jeopardy, but he did get cracked with a skateboard. Um, and I think it's kind of foolish, honestly. I think it's kind of foolish to take a skateboard to a gunfight. That's my opinion. I'm definitely not on the side of Rittenhouse. You know, I was hoping he got toasted just because of the arrogance that it takes for a person to do what he did. Um, but then again, he, he was obviously right. He was protected. He went over there and did exactly what he did, and he was walking away from it. And my thing is, he's going to walk scot-free and live his life and do whatever hell he wants to do. Because I don't think anybody that's related to these people have the kind of mindset that it takes to actually go touch him. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's the U.S. justice system, the American justice system, whatever you want to call it, in all its grandeur. It has never represented what we thought to be justice. It has never been balanced in its scales. It has never been unbiased. It has always targeted one group in a different way and more emphatically and intensively than it does the other. It has always given breaks to one group while over being overbearing and unfair to another. And to think that all of a sudden that's going to change now because of video cameras uh, is being quite naive. With that being said, look, I'm going to get out of here because I still have work to do on my desk. But I just wanted to stop by and hit that on the head. Don't forget, if you haven't supported the work uh, that we do at the Odyssey Project, go to the description box. Click that link and make it happen. Also, check out that video on the Pursuit of Purpose event that's taking place tomorrow live at noon. Uh, if you've ever had any questions about your purpose, this is a chance to jump in and go one-on-one, -on -one, toe to toe with yours truly uh, to talk about where your purpose is, how do you discover it, what do you do once you discover it, and how do you make it work for you uh, as you serve others. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable